when things don't look right and you have a painting crisis like I do is the time to go back to your basics the things you enjoy paint for me that is birds and something I've learned that I don't like to run out of paper and I'm already thinking I've started too much this way I also don't like to start here because I guess I could always cut but I don't want to look like the the painting the bird is about to fly off the page so use a pencil first if you want I recommend that for fun you go straight with your brush and I always start with the beak and then decide which at uh, which distance from the beak is the eye this is a chickadee at what distance and at what kind of um angle shall we say so the chickadee has a head that is long and back this is not going to be a scientific illustration of a chickadee is going to be a sketch that is fun to do tiny beak we have the eye by the way I, I tested it here first with straight ultramarine blue straight sepia and a mix these two colors are wonderful to mix together uh, you can also use any kind of cobalt and you can also use any dark earth except sometimes burnt sienna is not an always reliable some burnt siennas are yellow so that's my experience and you can just keep adding until you get the color you want. So I like to mix on the page. I mixed a little bit on the palette just to have my uh, drawing color. But see how if I mix on the page, I have better separation of the blue and the, and the brown. It's just more interesting. given how simple the rest of my painting is. Then you have this cheek. I also have a new brush, which is nice because it's nice and sharp. The point is nice and sharp. And if you're drawing with your brush, and it's not exactly drawing. All right, chickadees have a chubby little belly. And this is their shoulder. And, oops, I didn't silence my computer. And the, the wings are more brown. So even though I said I, I love having a sharp new brush for drawing, but try to use as much as you can the whole brush not just the tip you're not like doing this you're just using the belly of the brush in part this will I mean not when you need a thin line obviously but it will lengthen the life of the brush though I wouldn't know because I go through brushes fast and then you decide not decide but look at where the where the um legs are so the foreleg is right under this shoulder so this way oops everybody tells you not to erase when you draw anyway so you might as well paint 
because if you keep it light, which I didn't hear, obviously, you can paint over. All right, so let's imagine this brush, I mean, this branch, which I imagined too high. But here's an example of how much more interesting it is to let the colors mix on the paper, right? We have the tail. You just keep looking and fixing things as you desire. Maybe a little bit of shadow here. bags under his eyes. Now we want the eye to be darker. So I'm going in with some neat paint. That's how the British artists call it. Neat paint, meaning straight from the tube. And you could give, if you have a thin brush, you can give it little, little things like that. Is it bad that I like the branch best? It's one of these days I'm going to start painting very large birds and see what happens. Because... I love painting small, I love painting birds, but watercolor likes large things, like large expanses of water and paint. It likes spreading and doing its thing over space. So I'm curious to see how that would work with my birds if I gave space for some nice water effects. But meanwhile, I got to paint a little chickadee with you and I've seen several out in the snow and I, um, I wish you all a wonderful new week that's about to begin. It's Holy Week for Christians, so it's kind of a special week. And um, thank you for being here with me and this chickadee.